the roof was complete. All I needed now was rain to see if it was watertight. I added a stringer under the front edge and fastened it to each board and battened with screws to hold it all together. And then I trimmed off the loose ends. It was time to build a floor. A problem with building with green lumber is it shrinks and you end up with cracks. I didn't want cracks in the floor because sawdust would soon fill the space between floor and ground. I'd already added a ledger across the back, the same height as the beams the sawmill sits on. I needed to add another ledger on the front, which would be right at ground level. I doubled a couple of 2x4s and treated them with preservative because they're against the ground. Shiplap seemed the easiest and best way to avoid cracks sawdust would fall through. I could cut these on the table saw. First though, I shovel out all the sawdust and all the wood chips and loose dirt that would be covered by the floor. Another problem with green wood is it curls and bends and shifts as it dries and shrinks, particularly from the alder trees I'm using to grow out of a steep hillside with curved trunks and lots of internal stress. A pry bar helps close the gap. Each board is about six inches wide. I will need approximately 50. Here is just one board in real time. Sawdust was wet when I cut the green lumber. Now it's stuck to the boards and has to be swept off each one. All the boards are slightly longer than necessary and the ends are not square so I have to trim both ends for square and for length. Each board is 100 inches long. Except for a few 8-footers, I forgot my measurement after taking a few days off from the project and cut several at 8 feet. All those woody strings are the result of a dull bandsaw blade.
each board is just over an inch and one eighth thick. I set the blade height on the table saw at nine sixteenths and set the fence nine sixteenths from the left side of the blade. Four cuts the length of each plank would give a square cutout on each edge. Table saws scare me for good reason. Cutting these though the blade is always buried in the wood. After the first cut, I come back, flip the board, and do it again. Because the boards are not precisely the same thickness, when I make the third and fourth cuts, I'll flip the board end for end, so the cutouts in the boards will be the same 9 16 dimension. Now I have one complete floorboard. By the time I finish the floor, I will have spent approximately five hours cutting shiplap.
I taken up the small, short boards between the beams that was my temporary floor to keep tools out of the mud. Some were just laid in there, others were nailed. So I took a break to remove nails from the boards. I'm not so frugal that I'll be using those nails again, but I don't like leaving nails in boards. It was a good excuse for a break. Before I can continue with the floor itself, I need to extend the front ledger. Shovel the dirt and chips out of the way and pitched them over the side. It's one advantage of living on steep ground. There's always a downhill. And then it was back to making more shiplap. One decision I had to make before starting the floor was whether to build around the adjustable feet on the sawmill tracks or unfasten the entire track and put the floor under it and put the mill bed back down on top of the floor. I decided to leave the mill track on the beams for two reasons. One, it would be an awful lot of work to remove it and replace it. And two, I didn't want it sitting on green wood that would shrink and swell and curl at uneven rates, which would require me to constantly realign the tracks. It was a little bit tedious making cutouts in some of the boards to go around the feet, but all in all, it was a better alternative. I want to get these as tight as I can so when the gap does open up it's not so wide that sawdust can fall through. Floorboards next to feet not only have to be notched for the post, they have to be hollowed out on the underside to cover the pedestal the foot sits on.
the floor project progressed slowly and unsteadily. I didn't film most of it because it's all the same over and over and over again. And if it bored me, it's surely going to bore you. So I'll skip a lot of that and we'll jump ahead here. My roof is not 100% waterproof. Most of the small leaks that developed are where are knots that I thought were tight <laughs> are not. But we're also getting some water under the battens and between the roof boards that is not being captured by the routed grooves in the roof boards. We got rain forecast, so I remembered this huge old tarp. So now my new roof. That's temporary. Later this summer when the rest of this project is done, I'll take the tarp off, go up there and figure out exactly what I want to do about that roof. Maybe just something as simple as a lot of Thompson's water seal. I don't know, but right now it's covered. It's going to rain in just a little while. Now, about this floor. I made a mistake. <laughs> I haven't done any floor in a week or two. I knew I had a bunch of boards that were more than long enough for the floor. Thought I'd use them up. How long? Quick check. Yeah, eight feet. Eight feet goes past that uh, joist over there. So I cut them all to eight feet. Cut the rabbits on the table saw. Came over here and realized, oh, I've been cutting these floorboards at 100 inches, not 96. I'm not going to throw these away. Perfection. Not on this project. So we'll just do the 8-footers until I run out. And then, cut 100 inches out of the next batch, which will be the next trees I bring down from the woods. Now here's another problem. I have my sawmill tracks that is low as they will go. It's not been a problem slipping floorboards under it. But the 4x4 four four beams that the floor or that the track rests on is not level in the end. The track is level though, so this is the high end of the 4x4s. Four Here the track is as low as it will go. And it's a little higher down at the other end. Well, I got all the way up to right here when there's no longer room to slip four boards. There's no longer room to slip floor blower. There is no longer room to slip floor boards under the track. Well, they'll fit under the track itself, but not under the bolts right here. Those bolts right there. So I'm going to raise the track one half inch, but not today.